Updating tonight's top story, a major shot in the arm for the nationwide broadband network. Two decades after the first such investments, the government to invest up to $100 million to upgrade the network. But this could see internet speeds boosted up to 10 times faster. And how this investment in high-speed internet will impact Singapore as well as Singaporeans, we have Yang Chi-Chi, technology, media and telecommunications industry leader at consultancy Deloitte Southeast Asia. And joining us on Zoom is Associate Professor June Tay, Head of the Digital Media Programme at SUSS. Welcome, both of you. Thank I'll you. start with you, Mr. Young, because you're yep, right sure. here in the studio. Yep. What are some of the future and current users we can see? Uh, the, the, just the obvious, right. this new fast right. broadband. Okay, okay. So I, I will broadly break down then into three main groups, right? One will be, I would say, the, the high bandwidth uh, organizations, yeah. Uh, the second one will be the connectivity intensive organization, and and the third one, which in my view is the most exciting one, will be organizations. The, you mean as in um, those organizations that require, that require yeah. a lot of connectivity. Yeah. So yeah. businesses. Yeah. Right. And the third one, which is the most interesting one, will be those with emerging technologies. Mm. So the first one, you know, examples will be research institutions, right? Whereby they need a lot of uh, data simulations. They work a lot uh, in terms of uh, huge databases. Yeah. So, high bandwidth, yeah, uh, healthcare, right, uh, precision surgery, remote surgery, right, uh, tele doctor. I think all those increasingly you will need uh, higher bandwidth. Um, so, the second category will be the connectivity intensive. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones whereby you know organization with uh, a lot of employees, right, whereby there's a lot of collaborations, interacting with the crowd. Uh, data centers, etc. But as I mentioned, the, the more exciting one will be the third one, which is you know basically the emerging technology. So anything that you can imagine, uh, which require low latency, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and you let your imagine run wow, right? Gen AI, right? Uh, in terms of what it can they do, I think those will be the one that will really benefit, you know, from this uh, investment by the government. Uh, that's very interesting and perhaps a good point to bring Associate Professor June Tay into the conversation. She joins us via uh, Zoom. Prof Tay, uh, what do you think needs to change in terms of our current education uh, to enable us to have the kind of workforce that is that future ready? Okay, so I think in terms of education, um, I think uh, more collaboration is necessary. So uh, students uh, in future will learn in a very collaborative uh, environment, in perhaps uh, in mixed reality environment. So with um, the high speed uh, network, uh, this will make uh, this possible, this type of um, learning facilitate this uh, uh, project. And um, also students may also need to showcase their group projects in a virtual environment uh, setting. So I think, um, you know, and also streaming of uh, high definition uh, videos for on various topics for students to learn. Uh, Mr. Yang, for you, this question, yeah. during this transition period, right, where the upgrading is taking place, might take a few years, yep. right? Yep. Um, how, how will that inconvenience the public, uh, if at all? Uh, perhaps it's higher cost? Will there be some uh, infrastructure inconveniences? Yeah. So in, in terms of infrastructure inconveniences, uh -huh. right? Uh, obviously, if you sign up for this higher uh, yep. 10 gigabyte per second, yeah, I think there will be some uh, front-end equipment that needs to be replaced, mm -hmm. you know, which I believe the government is committed uh, to a certain extent to invest in that. Um, from a pricing, yeah, from a pricing, if you look at the Singapore landscape today, mm. uh, from an average revenue per user, um, it ranges about thirty to forty dollars, right? And yeah. and today, eighty five percent of the home in Singapore is fiber, mm. right? People have signed up for fiber. Um, so I would say the price point going forward, you know, it will really be a demand supply thing, yeah, uh, because in the last five to ten years. Every household moved towards at least one gigabyte, right? Eighty-five percent, right? So that trend will continue when the ten gigabyte come into the market, and it's where the service provider and the consumer need to find that uh, balance, sweet spot, sweet spot, mm. exactly right. Yeah, in terms of the pricing, uh, because today in the market, you know, 
Ferriclaw pricing to be from 30 to 80, 85, yeah, yeah. depending on yeah. the speed, right? But the average revenue is between 30 to $40. Right, Professor Tate, cost is just one concern. Uh, I, I just, uh, I can't pretend to be an expert. I just looked at Wikipedia. The countries with the fastest uh, broad be- broadband internet connections, uh, Singapore on various parameters ranks number five. But you have in front of us Romania, South Korea, Hong Kong, Monaco, uh, territories, uh, countries, and, and right after us, Denmark and Thailand. So these countries, they've gone fast and they would have faced all these issues including those mentioned by Mr. Young. Any lessons we can learn from these countries that have had these advantages perhaps just before we have had them? Okay, so I think uh, in terms of uh, pricing, uh, as Mr. Yap has mentioned already, uh, as more uh, players come on board, it will be more competitive. But uh, we can also learn like, um, you know, how to actually uh, help businesses to actually leverage on this um, high-speed network. So it actually, uh, with um, with this high-speed uh, network, it can actually enhance a lot of uh, uh, businesses. It makes uh, like AI uh, businesses is made possible because a lot of AI applications uh, requires a high-speed bandwidth, a low latency. So this will actually be very attractive um, you know, in terms of uh, creating uh, vibrancy in the business, uh, because of uh, and it is made possible because of the the, the new platform. Uh, yeah, perhaps to the both of you, uh, how will such uh, internet speeds boost our economic competitiveness? First to you, Mr. Yeah, so I think um, what the government has done is, I think, very clever. Uh, you see, in the US, in Europe even in certain part of Asia Pacific, government are all investing in uh, high, high speed broadband, right? So this were, in Singapore, I think with, with this coming on board, this will definitely attract, you know, the likes of research institutions, you know, uh, attract companies who are into AI to come into Singapore to invest. Yeah, so I think that from, a, from an economic perspective, yeah. you know, definitely it will bring a lot of benefits, you know, to, to, to the country. You, you agree, Prof Day? Yes, I agree. Uh, because uh, now that uh, they have to run all those large language models and uh, Gen AI, that will really um, requires very high bandwidth uh, with low latency. So uh, this is made possible by uh, this uh, new um, new upgrade uh, to the national broadband networks. So I think um, companies will, especially tech companies, will welcome this initiative because uh, they can also bring in their research um uh, researchers uh, to Singapore and then they they will not have to worry about the speed of the network and the infrastructure uh, to be able to support uh, such research and business. Well, we appreciate you both uh, coming in and zooming in as well to, to give us your thoughts on this topic. Uh, I've been speaking with uh, Yang Chi Chi from Deloitte Southeast Asia as well as Associate Professor Jun Tae, Head of the Digital Media Program at SUSS.